Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher, and I've got a very special guest on the sofa, Eddie N. Moore, Jr., Interim President and CEO of Norfolk State University. And I've got a bio biography on you that will go on for five pages. Can we skip it? Yes. But what is the highlight of that biography? I would say the highlight of that bi biography is being selected by L. Douglas Wilder to serve as treasurer of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Oh, so you, because your name could be on the bottom of those, all those Every checks. check that was issued. Cool. My name was on it. But as an educator, you've got a resume that just will beat the band. I mean, it's awesome. I got a break and was selected to be the comptroller and treasurer of William and Mary's, uh, the university, at the college, as well as the endowment association there. And that was really a big break because for an accountant, that crossed me over into the financial management mm -hmm. arena being responsible for uh, the accounting of their endowment. And when you look at higher education, don't you kind of have a parallel path that the university's got to be one as run as a business that can be solvent and be high level on its curriculum and its academic reputation, right? Well, I think you're right, but I think uh, the main point is the students come to be educated, the faculty are there to do that job. Mm -hmm. That is the mission. Now, I would tell you in the course of a normal day, five out of six decisions I make are about finance. Mm -hmm. uh, they really are. The allocation, uh, gaining more, how do we uh, spend what we have effectively. So it's uh, a really a to me, a really a financial centered operation if you have an excellent person, which I do as a provost, to uh, caretake the academic side. So you just kind of alluded to the fact that it's a team effort, it's not just one person that's it's doing a, it. It's a real team effort. Uh, most institutions have basically four or five people in their leadership. The provost has the main mission, which is the academic programs. The financial person in Virginia is paramount because if we don't keep our finances in order, 48% of our budget comes from the state. So we have a chance to lose mm -hmm. it. Most of our students are getting federal financial aid, another financial issue that if we don't keep that straight, we lose access to it. And then we have fundraising, which we call development mm -hmm. or friend making, and we call that development. And the other vice president is, again, centered on the students, and that's their life out of the classroom. Well, and let's talk candidly, too. I mean, probably the biggest issue in higher education today is the cost to the student. Yes. And the burden of sco lifetime school debt. So if you're not running it efficiently and keeping costs down, ultimately that's going to have an impact on enrollment, right? Right. I try to express that in a term that everyone knows, and that's value. I believe Norfolk State is one of the better ex education values available. We are one of the lowest cost institutions, mm -hmm. and we provide a high quality education and make that available to our students. When you add the two together, it's value. Okay, I want to go personal here for a sec. Let's roll back about 25 months. Okay. You had a successful career at Virginia State, right? Right. So uh, let's walk into the, into the Moore household. What were you and Mrs. Moore talking about doing the rest of your lives? Well, I think she was just overjoyed to be able to spend uh, more time with her brothers and sisters. She's from a large family. There were 14 children, Whew. seven boys, seven girls, and 13 of them are still alive. Wow. So she was happy to be back with her family. Her father is 97. So two years ago, he was 95. She was really wow. interested in spending more time with him. And I had resolved myself to be a professional board member. I am blessed to be on the boards of both uh, Owens and Minor and Universal Corporation. So that was how I was staying somewhat busy. Now, was it the house phone or the cell phone that rang? Uh, it was the cell phone. <laughs> and the, the, the question was? Uh, would you be interested in helping us out here at Norfolk State? Was there hesitation? Uh, I said I had to learn more. And okay. when they explained uh, more and uh, several board members talked to me about their perception and I said, okay, if that's the way you think it is, then I'm, I'm on board, I'm your person. 
I said, but I think we'll find out that there are other things mm -hmm. that need to be resolved. What did you find out? Well, we found out that uh, everything could be improved always. Uh, the central theme of a college should be constant improvement, improving your academic programs, improving your service delivery. And we were a little off course on that theme. And we're getting people back on, on board with every year we have to basically do more with the same amount or less mm -hmm. and uh, provide better service at a lower cost to our students so that more of the money can go into the academic offerings. It, it's again, it's, you know, it's that balance between perception and reality. I know there are many, many excelling students that graduated from Norfolk State. Mm -hmm. They're excelling in their profession. Mm -hmm. Social work, I mean, that's, right. wow, just, um, but it's one of the best kept secrets in town. I mean, you drive, you know, my vantage point for years was 264, and you right. saw the stadium, and, wow, that looks cool. But when you walk the campus, it's awesome. So how does it make you feel when you don't quite hear that in the public, though? Well, I, I would agree with you that Norfolk State has probably kept its candle under a bushel basket, and we're trying to expose that more. I think if you look in the media, we're taking every advantage mm -hmm. of announcing things and offerings that we have available, coming attractions, so to speak. We're also announcing achievements that we have, the different accreditations that we've won over and above the, uh, the SACS accreditation. Uh, the grants that we've won, the recent advancements that we've made in cybersecurity that have been recognized by the federal government, $35 million in grants is good at any college. Wow. And, now, and i got to ask you, have you been to the holiday parade where the, uh, the band marches down? I mean, there's a community I, I, pride. I, I did not attend last year's uh, holiday parade, but I do understand that. I mean, there's this, there is there this is. connection. Especially during a MEAC tournament, we yes. kind of see that connection. We really see the connection there, and, and I am grateful that uh, the city is hosting it. I'm even more grateful that they're sort of homers and they're rooting for us uh, to stay as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it makes good business for the city, and it makes a uh, wonderful time for our athletes and students. And as the interim president, though, when, I, when people form their opinions based on the marching band, Mm -hmm. or the win-loss of the athletic right. team. As an educator, how does that make you? That, that is disappointing, and that's why we've had an added emphasis on, mm -hmm. on touting our cybersecurity program, on uh, featuring one of our STEM uh, graduates that's gone on uh, to become a PhD and a leading professor at uh, Syracuse University. We need to tell folks what people are doing. We have had a young man who's now a retired three-star general uh, that came through our ROTC program. We have a major general that's still on active duty. That's two stars for the listeners that don't mm -hmm. know. So we have people who have excelled in every offering that we have. And of course, as you said, our choir and our band are world renowned. Mm -hmm. So we have a very strong music program too. When you walked onto campus, where did you begin? Uh, meeting people. I uh, was shown the office, which I think is the best office I've ever had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I was, I tell people I didn't design this, <laughs> I inherited it. Uh, and just got out to start meeting people, and we're still doing that. I have specific dedicated office hours for students. They can sign up and have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the president. I added this year faculty and staff. My next week's agenda, uh, office hours are full. Uh, every one of the hours I've set aside, someone's coming by to, to talk to me. This summer, we did brown bag lunches where I would pick a topic or the people would pick a topic and I would just spend the lunch hour. Uh, they could bring their own lunch or buy a lunch in the dining hall and we just, I would explain to them our budget process, our tenure and promotion process, our advancement activities, what we were allowed and, and not allowed to do in state government. So it was very well received. The last one, the third in the series, had nearly 50 people attend it.
So who gets more informed in these meetings? You or the people that are attending the meetings? Well, I find out about issues that wouldn't normally come yeah. to me. And uh, because they're filtered as they go through all the supervisors. And I think the people find out that it's a little more difficult than they thought it was to, to actually run the university and to do it well. By and large, I was thanked every time that one of the sessions ended and encouraged to keep them going even longer than the summer period that we set them up for. If I were to ask you, what is the reality of Norfolk State today, what would you say? Well, I'm, I would probably ask you what you really meant by reality, but I think the reality of Norfolk State today is it's, it's a well-established 80-year-old, we're mm -hmm. celebrating our 80th year institution that is focused on the future. And we're gonna begin the process to determine what the Norfolk State of 100 years looks like very soon. Awesome. The role of the university in the community, what do you see mm -hmm. that as? Well, I think that's been probably a little misunderstood and it's, very, it's been very difficult for me to grasp because everyone sees it in a, a different way. There's a lot of people right around the campus that really rely on the, uh, the university for cultural entertainment, mm -hmm. for sports entertainment, uh, even to run some of the, what I would say are more like public services that are going on through the Bramelton Center, uh, which unfortunately because of our budget reductions, we had to cut some of the services that we were providing there. But I think they, they are counting on the university, maybe even too much, to be uh, you know, the leader in the community on providing community services. That would be something, if I became uh, longer term, that I would really want to work with the city on to get a better understanding of what's my role and what's the city's role as we work together for the community surrounding the campus. Well, you mentioned it then. Um, in 10 years, when you're sitting on that sofa with me, <laughs> we, okay. let's pretend. Where would you like to see Norfolk uh, State be? Well, I'd like to see it uh, to be a thriving university back around six to 7,000 students, a real opportunity uh, to continue to serve the underserved. And by that I mean that we want to serve the, the students that some colleges really don't want to serve and that we believe are really good and talented students and if they get the right nurturing, they will bloom their sophomore, junior, senior year into very productive citizens. Uh, I would like to see us regain our national influence We've lost a lot of appeal to out-of-state students, and I think that's because we're not telling our story. We, we really concentrated on telling it in Virginia. I'm going to go back up and down the I-95 corridor because uh, it's, well, like they say about foreign countries, we can get brain drain out of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, mm -hmm. everywhere else. And once those students have stayed four or five years in Virginia, they're not going back. There you go. You got it. Mr. Moore, let me, like, let's not wait 10 years. Okay. Before you come back on the sofa. Come on, feel, for, feel welcome to come back anytime and let us know what the reality is. We will. At Norfolk City. Invite us back after the first of the year. Sure will. We'll have good news or, or another plan, but it's going to be good news. There we go. And I'm, I'm going to, I'll ask somebody else about the football season. How's that? Well, you do that. But <laughs> they're going to be bullish as I am about it. <laughs> there we go. Thanks a lot. All right. For uh, saying yes on that cell phone call about two years ago. Okay. We My pleasure. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.